So um, it's a little bit difficult to introduce someone who everyone knows, <laughs> but um, I will just use what we submitted to QA as a responsible lecturer CV. So I think everyone knows uh, Dr. Kamal Nan, otherwise known as Kung. Um, I have known her now for 11 years. It's 11, 2008 to 2019, 11 years. Uh, Dr. Kung is my go-to person. Anytime I'm in Thailand and I am somewhere and I'm trying to make someone understand and they don't understand, then I call Kung. All times of the day, early morning, late at night, she's always, yes, what can I do for you? So uh, Dr. Kung is like my sister. Actually, at AIU, I have three sisters. Mrs. Rita, Dr. Kung, and Pumarin. They are my go-to people. When I need something, you know, these are the people I go to. But since this is academic, let's go to the academic side. So Dr. Kung has a, a PhD in bioscience uh, from Kasetsart University, a Master of Science in Microbiology from Kasetsart University, and a Bachelor of Science in Applied Biology from King Mongkut's Institute of Technology. She is our resident microbiologist in the Faculty of Science. She also teaches microbiology for the nursing uh, program and uh, fundamentals of science for the nursing program. She is interested in microbiology generally, uh, specifically in the research, in terms of research, she's interested in fungal genetics and bacterial biodiversity. For this research that she is doing, this is a new area for her, uh, almost as new as it is for all of us, because this is not something that she has been involved in previously. But Dr. Kung has been at uh, AIU, previously Mission College, since 2002, at 17 years. Uh, initially as an instructor, then as a lecturer, then senior lecturer, assistant dean for the Faculty of Science, dean for the Faculty of Science, and currently the director of research at Asia Pacific International University. She is one of the most competent people at our university. Uh, we know this because I think she has been on every single committee. Even though we know you're supposed to rotate you know, every two years, but every time she goes back to these committees. And so this afternoon as we listen to Dr. Kung's um, uh, presentation, we want you to um, get your pencils and pens out. For those of you who are not scientists, ask as many questions because she told me she's going to give you a lot of time to ask as many questions as possible. But um, please, um, open your minds. Open your ears as we listen to Dr. Kung's presentation this afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Walemba, for a very formal introduction. It made me feel like I have to give very formal talk. All right. Um, my research is about, basically, it's about biogas production. All right. And it helps support the the farmer to use the clean energy, okay? And our team consists of four people, um, myself and Dr. Chipton from AIU. Nat Tapon is from the Dairy Farming Promotion Organization across the road. And Dr. Nawarat is from Surat Nari University of Technology in Korat, okay? And this research is granted by uh, biodiversity-based economic development office in Bangkok. And what I am going to report to you today is only little part of the whole research. All right, the objective of this study, one of it is to study the optimum condition, to, to study to find the best suitable condition for by using the fresh starter culture, it sounds, sorry, it sounds so a little bit too technical, but you will understand along the way, okay? So we use a starter culture from the biogas digester, the, the pond, the big pond of the waste uh, fermentation, okay? Together with the substrates in the community. Um, the substrate used in the community is the waste, organic waste that we use, okay? Like cow dung can be the 
uh, organic waste from uh, cafeteria, from the market, anything. Okay. And this is the study in the laboratory level. We haven't gone through the 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 the, the how do I say in the laboratory level, not gone to in in the nature, in the real one yet. However, I will show you later. Okay? And we're trying to help farmer uh, to accelerate to increase the production of of the biogas faster. Okay. But so sad that we, we learn, we know that in Mork Lake area, there are more than 2,000 dairy farms in Mork Lake area. Um, since King Ramanai has developed this area to become the dairy farming, okay? Uh, and we have about more than 80,000 cows. But very, very rarely that the farmers will want to use the waste from their farm to, to produce the biogas at the, as the alternative energy. Very, like none of the, m many of them, most of them are not interested, okay? All right, and how do we help them to, to get to know how to uh, uh, produce the biogas in the easy way with a high efficiency? And you know, many of them do not have confidence. They don't know what it is, and they don't want to invest on it because they think maybe it's not consistency. Produce gas, and maybe it's difficult to to, uh, to build, you know, the pond and how to control. They don't know how to do. Okay, so our research is to try to make it easy and less expensive for them. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce to you that biogas is the gas that produced from biological uh, substance. Okay, and biogas mainly consists of methane. Okay, methane is the gas that we can use to make the fire. Okay, 60 to 70 percent of biogas con consists of methane and carbon dioxide a little bit and very low amount of hydrogen sulfide. Okay, and that can be used to for the cooking gas, or can be used to to um, even generate the electric power to to turn on the fan, to turn on the aircon, to turn on lots of electrical uh, equipment. Okay, and this gas can be produced from the waste, organic waste from local. And especially this area, we have a lot of uh, uh, cows, dairy farms, so there's lots and lots of waste, organic waste, okay? And the special thing about cow dung, uh, cow manure or cow poop, is that in here has uh, both, uh, how do I say, the food of bacteria, nutrients for bacteria, and also itself contain high amount of little, little, teeny, tiny microorganisms. Okay, and these microorganisms are necessary, are very uh, needed for producing biogas, methane. Okay, so basically we need the food and the workers, the microorganisms that, that are in the substrate. Okay, you can use, you can use uh, uh, vegetable uh, from the farm, the grass, and lots of green stuff that you don't use anymore, the, the waste from the cafeteria, you know, the peels of the fruits and everything. But those will produce very low amount of biogas without the workers. You need to put the workers, the microorganisms, into it as well. So this is very important, the, the substrate. Okay, so when you have the substrate, okay, alone, okay, uh, the cow dung alone, uh, you can you can cover it, you know. You put in the pond or in the bucket or anything. Cover it with no air. This this condition is called anaerobic. Okay, aerobic means like you exercise with lots of oxygen. Okay, anaerobic means like no oxygen needed. You must not have oxygen. If you have oxygen, then the substrate will not be converted to the biogas. Okay, you need to like close tightly. Then the biogas will be produced. Okay, and in the other condition to, to, to increase the rate of biogas production is to add the starter, add more workers. 
okay, add the starter, add more workers. And the workers, the starter or microorganism that you add must be active, not the dead one, not the weak one and the dry and the, you know, it has to be active, okay. In the same condition with no oxygen, you will produce a lot of biogas. Okay, the methodology of this experiment, you've got to, uh, we have to uh, find the substrate that is good one. Okay, as I say, the substrate has to be high nutrient and also um, has a lot of microorganisms, the, the active microorganisms. And to, to get that, okay, uh, and to avoid, avoid the, the, is that dilemma? To avoid the, the disagreement with the result, okay? So we use organic cow dung. Okay, organic cow dung. So that you know, when people ask, uh, the fermentation or the, the biogas may be produced from maybe some chemicals that contaminated with your cow poop, and then we cannot explain why. So we try to cut as many factor, avoid many factor as we can. So we use organic cow dung. So we have to search for the the farm that uh, feed the cow with uh, organic food. Okay. And we survey and we found the organic farm at the dairy farming promotion organization across the road. And in this organic farm uh, has 42 cows. Each cow weighs about 500 to 600 kilograms. So they're quite big. They produce a lot of uh, poop per day. Okay? <laughs> a lot. <clears throat> so it, it is good size of the farm. And uh, further, you know, we got to observe the general information. You know, being a scientist, you got to observe everything in your in the experiment in your area. Okay, so we went to the farm and see what water do they use? Do they use any chemicals? What do the cow eat? Okay, this is the cow food that they. This is part of the cow food. Not only this napier grass. This is napier grass, and it's not fresh grass. They they cut the grass that they grow by themselves into like small pieces and, and fermented it, like put in the ground, cover it with plastic sheet, make it fermented a little bit easier for the cow to digest, okay? And they put something else like, um, like what is that? I don't know, um, some hay and some other thing else to mix with the cow, cow food, okay? And they use about one and a half tons per day to feed 42 cows. Next step is we have to, to uh, produce the starter, okay? What is the starter again? The starter is the workers, the microorganisms, and we got to make them active, not the weak one, okay? In order to produce the starter, we, we, we said we are going to construct biogas digester, okay? We have to find the area in the university and and it's supposed to be the area that uh, the sun has to shine all day, no shade, nothing around. Okay, so we found that nearby our greenhouse has the area that we can get permission to dig the ground. Okay, during the Christmas break last year, I did not go anywhere. I keep calling Mr. Pradeep, can I use this area? Can I use your workers to help me dig the ground? Okay, so these, these brothers are so nice. They came on the holiday <laughs> to help me dig the ground. Okay, uh, first of all, we have to make the plot. We, we try to make it as uh, good size as we can, not too big, not too small. So the small size that we, we construct was about two meter times three meters, and the depth is one meter, okay? Okay, so the back hole, uh, dig the ground in the size that we want, and by hands, Mr. Wishai and uh, the other student, worker students, uh, uh, Sanu from from Laos. He, they, you know, they are so muscular. They help me dig and make sure decorate the 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 pond in the nice shape. And then the whole team with the workers from AIU help put on the PE sheet. Okay, glue them together. Okay, let them dry. And this is one of our uh, researcher from dairy farming organization. Okay. After that, then we cover the sheet lining at the bottom of the, of, of the pond, okay? Then add water, 
add water before we, this is the top part. Remove that top part, add water. Water that we use has to be dechlorinated. You know, water that, the tap water contain uh, chlorine, okay, chlorine. So we have to uh, use rain water or, or you, we, we can uh, uh, put the water, the tap water in the reservoir tank, the big tank at the greenhouse and leave it for like two weeks until it's, it's, there's no more chlorine. Chlorine is kind of evaporated. And then we use that water to eliminate the argument at the end of the result. Okay. All right, then we went to the, the farm to get the organic cow manure and then put them in the pond and mix them up. Can you imagine, I, my nose uh, has no more sense, <laughs> sense detectable, you know, it's not, when people say, oh, it's so stinky, I, I, I have no feeling anymore that anything is stinky because you work with this for a long time, you hardly can smell anything else, okay? All right, and then after we fill up the, the pond, which contain about six, six tons, two meters times three meters times one is about six, six tons of the liquid of the slurry. Okay, then you put the, the top sheet, okay, and wait for, this is the two days already, it started to produce gas a little bit already. And you, you wait for a moment, okay, like about three weeks, okay, the top part is popping up because the gas produced, okay. And we look at the pressure gauge, and that's uh, quite high pressure, about 1.8 millibar, okay? So that means the biogas is just about ready to be used, okay? We tested, you know, this is only the beginning of the experiment. We only make the starter. It takes a long time, okay? So we test it by uh, uh, light, light the gas. At the beginning, it, the, the fire was not consistent, produced, okay? We wait for a few more days and then try again until the fire produced a, like dragon, you know, like, <laughs> you know, very, very hot. And you can see very clear um, flame, okay? That means the workers in here are ready to be the starter, okay? And so we call the company, we hire them to analyze the gas. We want to see uh, the, com the composition of the gas in the, in the pond, that, uh, like how many percent of methane, carbon dioxide, and the rest, okay? So now we know that our starter uh, uh, has, the, has the good uh, amount co of component of biogas. Okay, then we use our starter to, to mix in the uh, experimental uh, bottles that I'm going to explain next, all right? Um, our biogas pond that we use as the starter has, has uh, been, was constructed in two times. During the Christmas break, uh, December, okay? And another time is in summer, in April. This is to compare uh, the quality of the starter in the cold season and in the summer time, okay? And if you can see the, the graph, sorry, this is, some of these are in Thai. Um, during the December 2018, the average uh, temperature of the atmosphere in Mok Lake area is a little bit lower than the summer time about six to seven Celsius degree. It can go up high to 10 Celsius degree during the daytime, noon time, okay? So it's quite different. The temperature at the cold, uh, cold season and the summer season are quite different. So we use the starter from the cold season to ferment, to produce biogas, compared to the summer starter. Let's see how it goes, okay? And you might wonder, how do, we, how do we produce the two different starters in the two seasons? The, when we're done with the December experiment, okay, we use the biogas, uh, we use the starter from the pond and, and we go in the lab and do experiment. After we finish using them, okay, we have to suck them out, clean out the pond, 
and then start over again in summer. Okay. Now, uh, after analyzing, we found that the hour starter contain in the cold season contain uh, the composition of methane about 75%. Compared to the summer season, you can see that the composition of methane is much higher okay, in summer. That means the atmosphere temperature is quite effect, it's quite, it's quite you know, uh, help the production of methane to produce higher and higher concentration of methane. All right, then now we have the starters, okay? Then we are going to use the starter from the pond to put into the lab, okay? First of all, we got to build uh, the incubator. The incubator, normally the one that can adjust the temperature will cost more than 100,000, right? 100,000, right? So uh, this incubator costs about 5,000. It's the design of Dr. Shipton. And the clever worker, he's very smart. You, Mr. Sombat, you know, Mr. Sombat. You know, we told him what we want, and then he, you know, designed how it looks and tell us what to buy. Okay. Um, finally, he made the incubator for us with the three doors that can put uh, 22 tanks inside, and we can control the temperature inside. We test it, and it works so well. Okay, and it's so affordable price. All right, this is how the uh, it, our incubator look like. And uh, during the preparation, we got to prepare the tank of uh, biogas digester and also prepare the gas collector. It sounds so technical, and many of you started to sleep. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you have questions, you're welcome to raise your hand. Yeah, this is how we make the, the tank, the fermenter, the small tank to be used in the lab. And the tank is about seven liters. The tank is from a uh, 20 baht shop. Okay? With this guy, everything can become like, you know, more expensive. Okay. After finish uh, inventing the tank, we have to test it, uh, whether the tank has air leak or not. And we, we <laughs> to test it in the cheap, simple way is to just close the tank tightly and push it under water, okay? And we use, uh, can you guess where it is? Salatai, okay? So we come kind of run here and there to see if there's bubble. If there's no bubble, that means that tank is, is approved to be used in the experiment. We've done this like 22, more than 22 times because some tank is leaking. All right, and now we come into the main part of this experiment. Um, this table shows the experimental designs use starter and substrate. Okay. There are four sets, basically there are four sets. The first two sets of the experiment, we use the starter from the cold season in December. And we incubated it at 35 Celsius degree incubator. We adjust it to 35 Celsius degree air temperature, not the liquid temperature. Okay. And because we want to, um, uh, okay, let, let's move on. Okay, set three and four, we use the starter from the summer biogas digester, and we adjust the air temperature in the incubator at 45 Celsius degree, which is higher, about 10, 10 Celsius degree, okay, uh, to imitate the, the, the nature in the cold season and in the summer season. And if you take a look uh, carefully, okay, in each set, set one, two, and three, and four, okay, has six different conditions. Okay? The first three ABC conditions contain no additional substrate, which is napier grass. We, we try to study that if napier grass help the farmer to produce biogas even faster, Okay, and the DEF, we, contain, we put napier grass, ABC, no napier grass, okay? And in uh, set one and three, we only add cow manure, only 5%. And set two and four, we add cow manure 20%, which is higher. If, if you were the farmer, which experiment that you think it would be the best to produce biogas. Dr. Walemba. 
Maxine, Pharaoh. What do you think? Which one, which one that you think it will be best condition? This is the hypothesis, you know. You, you design and you must have something in your thought, think already. The higher, the higher one, right? And with the grass or without grass? With the grass. You guess that must be with the grass. And another factor that we study is that we put the starter, remember the set one and two, we get the starter from the cold season. We, we just suck it out from the pond, okay? The workers, the active workers from the pond. You see, we vary from 10%, 20%, 40%. 10, 20, 40. Okay, which one do you think that is the best? 40? 40 should be the best? Should be, no? We need more workers, yes. <laughs> should be best. Okay, let's see how it goes. So you think that this should be the best? F of set 4. No? Okay. Hmm? Why set 4? Why not set 2? Because of the temperature. You, you think that the temperature is also another factor that affect the biogas production. Right, Amanda? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. T, do you agree? Yes. All right, let's see. Okay, so first of all, we got to, you know, stir, you know. You know, I become muscular after working, <laughs> working with this. Without which I, I have to do it by myself. So we, we stick the tube inside the tube. You know, you got to be smart a little bit. The tube has to have the hook. At the at the end, because how are you gonna get the bio? How are you gonna get the slurry inside the biogas pond? You're gonna suck it out. You're gonna use the you know think about it. So we use the the big tube and stir it about 20 times before we we take the starter, the workers. Okay. So see at the end. So after stir it for some time and take it out, put in the uh, bucket, measure the pH and. You know, then prepare the, the other components, okay? So we get the grass, chop them up, weigh them, and the cow poop, you know? My workers, Jampa, is, is one of the <laughs> helper, okay? After the whole day of preparing, preparing of this, you know, the whole body from head to toes are full of, you know, smells. We are smelly. Mm. So smelly. <laughs> Yeah, and when we do not have enough, you know, we, we, we have to get the cow poop from the dairy farm, the organic dairy farm, when we, we didn't have enough. Sometimes we shot a little bit only. So we asked one of the worker to go to the toilet. No, just kidding. <laughs> but I asked, Sanu, can you please go to the toilet, get a little bit more, please? Oh, we were laughing. I try to make them like don't feel so <laughs> stuck in the stinky room for a long time. Okay, so we have to drive back to the farm to get the cow manure. Okay, so these workers start from like 6 o'clock in the morning. We finish 7 p.m. So for the grass, we have to chop it up and blend, weight it and blend it into like small, small pieces so that the workers or the microorganisms can, can digest easily. Okay, we got to measure the temperature, we got to, you know, measure the pH, make sure everything is controlled, okay, control. All right, and then we put in the tank, okay, close the tit lid tightly, put in the uh, incubator, and wait day one, is there any gas produced? Mark it at the gas collector, you know, the tube con connected to the tank inside the incubator, if the gas produced, the gas will replace the water in the, in this, gas collector bottle, okay? First of all, we put full bottle with water, okay? And then if there is gas, gas will replace water. Water will come out, will come down below here, okay? And we, you know, we use the three ways from nursing department, okay? So that when we want to test the concentration of methane inside, we can open the three way and suck the gas out and analyze with the machine. Here's the machine. Uh, 
let me show you a little bit. This machine is called biogas uh, analyzer, and it is a miniature of chromatography, gas chromatography, and you know, praise the Lord. This is something that I want to be the witness. I have been, I had been nightmare for a long time because this machine is so expensive, 22, uh, 200,000 baht per machine, very small one. But if you want to rent, it's 5,000 per day. And I cannot, I cannot know which day that the tank will produce a gas. And my experiment is about one month, 30 days. 30 days times 5,000, and you know, I'm not allowed to buy the expensive equipment, okay? So I couldn't sleep for a long, long time. My husband said, next time you don't get the grant, you know, he complained and this and that. And one day, I went into the meeting. Uh, the chairman said, is there anybody wants, wants Pastor Wara to pray for? I said, please pray for me. <laughs> I'm desperate. I'm dying. So Pastor Wara prayed for me. Right after he finished praying, the phone rang. But I didn't pick up the phone because it was in the meeting. So I, I had a meeting for like a few hours. In the afternoon, I, I, pick, I look at the number. My friend called from the other university, okay, far away. Kung, I know that you need the, the, the machine. You are struggling. I would like to, to let you borrow my machine. I will send it to you. <gasps> press the Lord, you know, press the Lord, really. Yeah, so I borrow his, his machine for like the whole month. Mm, praise the Lord. I really appreciate so much. And just want to show you. So we suck in the gas in one tube and the percent methane, sorry, it's upside down. So the percent, percent of methane will show up, see, 41%. And then we have to record it by cell phone. Okay, and here's the result, almost done. If you take a look carefully, this is set one, two, three, four. Set one and three use 5% cow manure. Set two and four use 20% cow manure. But set one and two incubated at 35 Celsius degree. Set three and four the incubated at 45 Celsius degree. You can see which one is the best. Don't forget that the y-axis uh, may be too small for you to see. <clears throat> you can see that uh, this is 2,800, maximum 2,800. This is 20,000, and this is 4,500. You can see that set three mostly produce a lot of biogas. And we will focus only these three tanks, okay? Because they produce quite fast. In day, they started to produce since day one, two, three, four, five, and day seven shoot up. You know, after one week, the biogas accumulate like so exponentially. Okay, but for set four also produce a lot. However, um, the maximum, the maximum of the uh, total biogas produced is about. Uh, 3,500 only, compared to this one, 20,000, which is much higher. And you can see a little bit of this graph, which I'm going to reveal to you later. Let's take a look at these three. Okay, These three tanks show us that uh, <clears throat> condition F of set three is the best, like what Many of us guess, right? But many of us guess that set four is the best. However, set three, okay, with the 5% cow manure and 10% of napier grass and 40% of the workers, the microorganisms, show the best uh, uh, total amount of biogas, okay, in green, gra in green graph. And compared to um, another tank, okay, we reduce a little bit of the starter you also get the biogas, but a little bit uh, less. <coughs> and this one, without near beer grass, also show that can produce biogas quite well as well. Okay. What about this, that we all guess that it should be the best? If you go back and take a look at the result of set four, 
of 20% cow manure at the high temperature, you can see that it takes a long time for them to, to digest the napier grass and lots of things. And it started to shoot highly at week three. Okay, but we, however, we stopped the, the experiment at you know, uh, day tw 30. Right, if we wait a little bit longer, I believe this one will even shoot higher than uh, set three, okay? But it started slower, okay? And if we take a look at the concentration of methane, uh, set three, okay? Set three compared to set four, which is like dark green, produce the highest concentration of methane. Okay. Comparing to the control, control produced very little amount of biogas, but very concentrated of methane. Okay. Compared to the graph up here, which is the concentration of methanes in set one and two in purple and green, respectively. Okay. They, they're quite low in percent, but uh, with the higher temperature, give better percent of methane. Okay. Um, and if we compare, uh, the fermentation or the, the biogas production uh, condition between uh, no gas, no, no grass, no nipia grass, no green, okay, with the green one, okay, we found that with the green one, with the nipia grass, which has higher nitrogen, produce higher gas, all right, and uh, with the starter, and no starter, you can see that with the um, starter with the control one, okay, the control, the two control has no starter. You can see that when we add the starter compared to the control, there, there's a quite high percent difference, okay? And with this is has no starter, sorry, probably this one is maybe something wrong, yeah. Always, when we add the starter, uh, compared to no starter, it produced much higher biogas. So my, con my conclusion for the uh, research today is that when we, when we are in the condition that has not so much of the cow manure, for example, in Mook Lake area, we, we have a lot of cow manure, of course. But what about the farmer who do not have dairy farm? If they grow some plants or they, they do not have cow manure, what do we do? This is the first experiment that mentioned about minimum use of the cow manure. Many papers reported that they need to use like 70% of cow manure or more than 50% of cow manure, but our our experiment show that only 5% of cow manure works as well, works so be best, okay? But you gotta add a lot of starters, okay? You can go to you know, the neighbor uh, that has biogas. Ask them that can you have a little bit of uh, the starter, okay? And you only add cow manure a little bit, add the napier grass a little bit. In the summertime, can help you to produce a lot of biogas for the clean energy and to be the alternative source of, of uh, energy. Any questions? This picture is the vegetable that uh, Ajahn Ratna has grown nearby the, uh, the biogas. And we water them with uh, cow dung. So they, they grow so good. Any question? Yes. Yes. I think, I don't know if the government party has uh, educated them about that, um, but it would be great if they, if they will, will, will be informed about that. Mm. Any question? Yes. With a, with a, oh, that's rather loud. With a project like this, um, 
what, what practical, tangible difference can this make to the community? And also, are there plans to, I, I'm, Maxine kind of stole a bit of my question, are there plans to, um, uh, to engage with the community, like after the project is finished, are there plans to engage with the community to, uh, to explain to them, you know, how their lives can be changed as a result of this? Yes, thank you for the question. Um, uh, Part of the project that I promised to the uh, to the grantor, to the Beto, the to the one who give me money. The last part is to uh, disseminate disseminate the knowledge that we found to the farmers for them to to understand in the simple uh, talk. Okay, so um, the last part is to make the video. At the beginning, I thought that I would set up the meeting for the farmers and invite them to come. But nowadays, you know, they can be at their house and their farm using the phone to take a look at the YouTube. So I asked Yoyo to help me with uh, videoing, and I explain and show them how to make the biogas digester in the YouTube, and I can send to the uh, the district for the district to distribute to the farmers put on YouTube but that YouTube has to be approved by university and the grantor first if it is proper or not yeah Ka -chan. Chan, uh, what is your next innovative research from <laughs> based on this I was thinking to uh, make the starter easy to to, to be used by the farmer, for example. Many people try to do this, but have not been successful. You know, if, if you want to get the starter from, from one neighbor, okay, the, this is the active, diligent workers, right? This is the very important one. But you have to, to suck it up using the pump, the water pump, put in a tank and travel from here to you know, another farm. Um, it's quite inconvenient. What, what I was thinking is to to make capsule or something, container or something to make it dry, and then pack in the an aerobic or uh, no air package, like you know, like a ball or something, uh, to be easy for them to carry here and there, like the concentrated one with the ball, is, which is easier than the liquid one, mm. which which has not been successful. Many researcher trying to put in the uh, uh, digestible plastic in the uh, uh, capsule like the small small beads but still in the research level mm. <coughs> because the workers in here the microorganisms are very very sensitive to the air you take them out for five minutes exposed to the air they die mm. you need to like close them up tightly yes Maxine you, you answered my question, because you, you had said earlier, you can go to your neighbor and get biogas. Can we be the neighbor to give them the biogas? Sure. You've answered that. Sure, very easy. We have the biogas pond already. Uh, how to make them active is that, you know, because it's the batch, it's not the continuous that we feed all the time and release all the time, you know. It's one big pond that we have to keep adding cow dung every week so that we add more food and work alive workers in in it and we have to drain it out sometime to you know to to make the ferment to make the pond active all the time you know uh, they are microorganisms so they eat food inside when the food is finished then they started to produce a lot of waste okay and the waste kill themselves mm. you know it, it's kind of we have to maintain so, if we want to be the source yeah. of the starter. So as a follow-on or an alternative, we don't have cows, but we have a lot of waste from the cafeteria. Is there a way we can kind of set this up and see if yes, we can do it from the yes, cafeteria waste? Yes, of course. We can use, uh, there's some many research that uh, showing that uh, the, the peels of fruits that contain a lot of sugar can even activate the, the biogas to be produced much a lot more. Mm. We can use the waste. But I know that they use the, the waste from the cafeteria for something else. So also they sell it. Yes. <laughs> 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 
the composition you said is about the starter, the uh, cow dung and so on, 5% and so on. That is to set up initial setup, right? Yeah, initial setup. And how about the maintenance? How much should we add and what is that to, be mm. add, uh, to have consistent flow? That's a good question. Um, you can, if, if the farmer really want to make the biogas pond like this, that is the design of the pond where you, where the farmer can, can always uh, feed in the cow manure from their barn. You know, the barn, the, the, the biogas digester must be nearby the barn. So when they clean up the cow poop from the barn, you know, they have to wash every day, morning and afternoon. After that, then the wastewater from the barn with the cow manure will drain to the pond directly, okay, okay. And then when it is, when the level of liquid is too high, then there is another drainer go out, yeah. That is another wastewater treatment system. At the same time, you get the biogas. Hmm. That, that's how you can continue to do it. But the, the, the uh, debris, the, the waste, the, how do you call that, a wind? The, the solid part of the, the, the cow manure will be accumulated if you keep adding the sediment will keep will be higher and higher. What you can do is you know maybe one year you can open open it and then take the solid the semi solid out and dry it and sell it as the fertilizers. Okay. Mm. Uh -huh. And re restart it. Restart it again like each year, but if you can continue. Okay, continuous batch, like continuous experiment. So if it, it produces best during summer, right? Yes. Because the, you maintain yes. the temperature. Yes. How about during winter? Is there any method to keep it warm? To keep it warm. Um, because this one is designed for the, to be in the nature, so we cannot control the atmosphere. However, what you can do is, after the biogas is produced, Go to, uh, biogas is sent to the through the tube to the uh, uh, electric generator, and you keep the electric in the form of big battery to okay. be used uh -huh. for something else in during the winter time. Okay, one more last. Yes. How much would uh, be the estimate to set up for a farm with, for example, it uh, a small farm with 20 cows? With this, right? Yes. Uh, with, uh, with this size of the biogas digester, I spend about 10,000 baht. For the whole thing? For, for the biogas, for the pond only. For the pond. For, yes, for this one. Okay. 10,000. For the, you know, the, the labors, for the materials and things. F everything to start up? Yes. Oh, okay. And free. You don't, you don't, if you don't buy the, buy, uh, the cow manure, free cow manure, the budget is about 10,000. Okay, okay. In, in the size of the farm with 20 cows, you can make even bigger pond with more biogas produced. I think the time is up. Um, but I have four science questions. Uh, the first one is, what was the control? What was uh, the control? Yes. The control is, control one, you know, only cow manure alone, like no napier grass and no starter. Control two, uh, control one is for ABC condition, okay? Uh, cow manure alone, this one with starter and control with no starter. We want to see if with starter or no starter is, is good. This is the control for ABC. And control two is for DEF, okay? Cow manure, nappy grass, but no starter. You can see that the, the control has no starter. So we're testing if with starter is good or not. Okay, the, the, the second one is, um because you, you're saying that according to the experiment, it shows that low concentration of cow manure produces a higher concentration mm -hmm. and quantity mm -hmm. of methane gas. So it suggests that the cow manure is not the substrate, but the cow manure is just providing um, maybe some kind of assistance to the starter. 
Yeah. Uh, it's like this keystone theory about quantity of bacteria mm. affecting other mm. bacteria. Mm. Why then did you not try from zero to five to validate? Because it would suggest that from if you're going from five up, the curve comes down, mm. then it means from zero to five or somewhere zero to ten, there should be a peak and then like a, a, an optimum level. Mm. Um. We didn't use the zero because uh, we try to limit uh, the experimental design as much as we can because this is a lot of work already. But we start with five so that, you know, at, at the beginning we want to start with five, 10, 20, 40, but we realize that it's too much. So we cut down from very low to the moderate. So, one. but now we know that low produces better than high. The is there any yes? Is there any any design to go from zero to five, or maybe from zero to ten? So we do one, two, three, and see if that there's a, a peak, some plateau somewhere below. Seems like twenty. Very interesting. We can do it for the student project next year. Okay. The last well, the third question is, what is the bacteria in the cow manure? What is the what are the bacterial species versus the bacterial species in the starter? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, that one we also uh, study, but we did not report here. Um, we use the, okay, we take the sample from the cow manure in the cold season and in the summer season to compare, and then we took the sample from the starter from cold and summer, so four samples. We uh, extract the DNA of the whole thing and send to analyze, and, and we found that, we found that. The cow poop in the cold season is different in both, in both type uh -huh. and quantity, quantity compared to the summer. The summer has more variety, happy making party, in the pond mm -hmm. and higher amount mm. Mm -hmm. in both cow manure and in the biogas digester. But the, the name of the species are a lot. You can take a look at my report. <clears throat> Most of them are, <clears throat> I didn't study archaea bacteria though, I study only uh, domain bacteria. So Firmicute and Bacteroides phylum are found mostly. So it, it, it suggests that our, the influences might be the type of bacteria, not the concentration of the, the poo. Is there a difference because um, we're saying that there's a difference between mm. summer and mm. summer and winter, and there's a difference in quantity. Mm. So the difference in quantity and the difference in diversity can affect the production oh. rather than the amount of the percentage of, of the poo that you put in? We, we, cannot, we cannot say that because we did not compare between the 5% cow poop and 20% cow poop. Okay, final question. So we, are, we were looking at the, um, the quality of the uh, gas, which is good, but from the economic perspective, you want the quantity. Mm. Uh, because even if you had, you know, not so good gas, but you had so much of it, you could still make mm -hmm. a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. What is the actual quantity produced of the gas? In this experiment? Yeah, not, not final, but like, so like if, if, if uh, Mr. Panindra wanted to do a business, mm -hmm. you know, what <laughs> would I be making every week rather than at the end of 30 oh. days, this is what I have. Because okay. this looks like it's cumulative, or yeah. is it, you know, yeah. What okay. is the daily? Okay, what we can do is to uh, calculate the, the steep of the graph. For example, like, like this one is 10,000. Another day is 10,000, 12,000. 12,000, right? Okay, the difference is 2,000 2, millimeter, 2,000 milliliter per day for the seven liters tank. But this is, this is uh, it's cumulative. You didn't no, no, empty no. all the gas, did no, you, it, and then start again? Right, this is the rate, right? This is yeah. the rate per day. 
It's yes, it's accumulated. But if you can compare, so the, you you the want to calculate days, the slope and determine oh. the rate. Yes, you know. calculate the slope. If seven seven liters produce two thousand mL per day, so the, if the seven tons, how many? I don't know. Um, seven tons times seven liters. Um, it's a thousand times. About two million. A thousand times. Yeah, yeah, we can calculate later. Anything else? Yes. Um, did you study the quality of the biogas produced? And if you did, which one was the highest qual quality? Okay, talk about quantity. Quantity, this is the quantity produced, accumulate each day in the in the in the collect collect bottle but Hesel asked about the quality right okay here's the graph show the quality you see uh, the quality of the methane concentration okay if you take a look at control one and two in set three and four you can see that the quality is quite higher than the rest of them except the experiment E and F, okay? The quant quality of methane is 55%, 55%, which is, which is acceptable, which is good, okay? In the control one and two. However, if you take a look at the amount gas produced, it's like very low, little bit only, but very concentrated. We cannot use ether because it's too little. Okay, we want both quantity and quality at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Um, I might not. I just want to ask, um, based on the pictures that you just showed, the farmers were actually using dry grass, mm. but in your experiment, you were using fresh grass. Was mm. there any difference in those two? The farmer used dry grass. I was just basing it on the pictures that I just saw just now. Oh, okay. That these pictures, uh, this is fresh grass is for our experiment, but this grass is for cow food. It's for the food of the cow. They don't use this in. I, I don't have the farmers that I can see they produce the 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 biogas pond anywhere. This is for cow food for cow to eat not for the biogas pond. Mm. Yes. Um, does the information question on the quantity where we have the percentages? I'm sorry if I did not get it very right, but when we are talking about 5% of manure, 10% of the grass, and 40% of the starter, I don't know where those are comparing to which quantity. Okay. Five percent from where and ten percent. I didn't okay. get that one right. Good question, Ka. Uh, five percent. Five percent of cow manure, like this, or twenty percent of cow manure, is five grams of the solid cow manure. You weigh five grams and put uh, water, pure water, uh, up to one hundred. And 20 means 20 grams weight per volume. Mm. And for the percent of methane is uh, percent of methane, like 65% of methane, that means in the whole biogas that produced. It, uh, after analyzing it, uh, in the whole biogas, they found 65% of methane, and the rest are other gas. Any other questions? Dr. T. Thank you. <laughs> so um, doing this experiment, you need to put a lot of effort, a lot of prey, and lots of things that you cannot control, uh, like temperature. Sometimes when the rain comes, you got headache. But uh, the Lord has been with us for, from the beginning from the writing the proposal, submitting to the, uh, to the agency until we receive the grant and until today. The Lord has been teaching us a lot of lessons. Yes. 
Thank you for the very interesting presentation. I just want to know how did you get the grant? Uh, did they approach you or um, was it your initiative? Okay. Uh, just a uh, description. That, that's very, very good question. I have been waiting for this uh, <laughs> question. Get the grant is something that I, I was not there to do it. I was afraid to do it because um, I don't know how to start. Um, and I don't have confidence. I think that I'm, I'm not good enough to get the grant. But um, the Lord has been working with our university gradually. Uh, uh, I was uh, encouraged by Dr. Natapon from Dairy Farming uh, Promotion Organization. He, she asked me to join her research first as the as the co-researcher, so I learned a little bit as the follower, as the assistant, a little bit here and there. And then she encouraged me to say, you know, you try to write a proposal, here's my proposal, use it and, and, and use it as the, uh, your, how can I say, your teacher, okay? So I learned from her, and then I write the proposal, including her. When you don't know what to do, you have to find the, the good one and follow the good one. Okay, and ask for advice. Humble and ask for advice. Okay, and then pray a lot. Ask God in every step of writing proposal. I ask God a lot of things about calculation, about a lot of theory that I don't know in science, and it has been becomes the proposal and submitted. Hmm. God has been always from the beginning in into this project from the beginning to the end. Hmm. Yeah, and. It's difficult, but it's kind of fun and tired. Mm. So if you are interested to, to want to write a proposal to submit to external uh, grant, I am willing to share my experience. I'm not the best, I'm not that good, but I can share my experience to you. But the, the, the leader of the proposal must be Thai citizen. And the team members can be anybody. Mm. And right now they will, they will grant the project that uh, co-work with other organizations more than uh, solo. They, they don't encourage solo research at all. They, they want to, to make the team research. Mm. Right now there are 12 agencies in Thailand that provide the money for research. Okay, in agriculture, in innovation and technology, medical, nursing, there's so many grants outside. If you have to pray and brave, be brave to do it. <clears throat> okay, first of all, congratulations for the success of the project and Praise also being Lord. able to report. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you are a research director, you are a mother, you are a wife, and you are carrying, I mean, you are also teaching a class, and you are carrying out this research. Mm -hmm. How? How did you manage? <laughs> to be honest, I cannot manage. Only God can, can help me. Um, I cry many nights. I, my kids were abandoned sometimes, and my husband as well. Um, it is really difficult, but, but I know that God is with me and will help the, the, these things to go through. And as I complain with Maxine and cry with her many, many times that I want to give up, I want to resign, Ajahn, I want to resign from, <laughs> from being so wearing so many hats at the same time. But only God can, can, can make me walk through these difficulties. I don't know how, but when you, when you don't know what to do, Ask your creator, ask your shepherd, he will guide you. You're just floating and then let him, let him blow you where to go. our desire and our hope that um, 
not only Dr. Kuhn gets this type of grant, but that more members of faculty um, work with other people because especially these grants are only given to um, um, teams which have a Thai investigator. So we want you to make friends, as many as possible. When you go for conferences, um, you have people you work with in other universities or research centers. Uh, this is the way that we will be able to continue to do research like this, which can actually make significant differences in the communities in which we live. Uh, once again, thank you for coming. Um, we know we've taken a little bit more of your time than expected, but we thank you for staying, for your questions. And until our next seminar talk, uh, we hope that you have ideas that you are developing to share with our research uh, directorate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. G to pray for us before we leave, and then we, we can depart. <laughs>